Hey there, Cynthia here with The Nameless Homestead, and today we're going to be bleaching some bones, so stick around. If you've been following our homestead's journey over on Facebook and Instagram for a while, you'll know that on our weekly hikes up in the mountains, I often come back with bones from local predators or local hunters that have been discarded. From those bones, I have been practicing bone carving, to make jewelry or hair ties or that sort of thing. Made this little guy, not quite finished yet, still a little rough around the edges. This is my first uh, deer bone made out of a leg bone um, hairpin, very cool. And then this guy is from the rib cage of a deer, from deer bone that we found from a predator scavenge so very cool and right over here in my handy dandy little crock pot I have an amalgamation of various leg bones and deer bones from various animals that are very dirty and gross still and I need to clean them and dry them before I can use them now there's a lot of different ways to do this this is just the way that I do it and that I have found works best for me um, some people will use carrion beetles, some people will boil away debris, some people will just set it out in field and let predators and natural decomposition take place and then retrieve the bones from that. So there's a lot of ways to, uh, to do this job. Um, what I prefer to do is to use hair developer. So the same thing you would get from Sally Beauty Supply or any local beauty supply store. It's what you would mix with bleach if you were going to lighten your hair. Um, works great to change the color of bones. I don't process my hair anymore. I'm going au natural. So it, in true homesteader style, waste not want not, at least I have a purpose for the developer I have. Um, so yeah, let's get started on that. The first step here is just simply going to be to wash them with warm soap and water. Big crock pot full of bones. Now the bones don't have to be perfectly clean. You just want to get the majority of any dirt, debris, or um, meaty or greasy material that has been left over on it off because the cleaner the bone is, the better it's going to take and the more evenly it's going to take to the bleaching uh, or developing process. And it'll be nicer, neater, cleaner, more stain-free bone. Once you're happy with how clean the bones are, go ahead and fill up your crock pot or any non-reactive metal pot you have uh, with water and make sure that the bones are completely submerged. That's key. Make sure that there's no little bits of corners or anything that are sticking up outside of the water. Otherwise, you're going to end up with uneven bleaching and that's always a bummer. Once you get your crock pot or stock pot um, going and the bones are covered with water, you're ready to add your developer. I haven't yet found a chart where it tells you exactly how much water to developer ratio that you should use. I just started with half a cup to a full crock pot of water. What size is my crock pot? How many quarts are you? I'm going to find out and put an icon or something with how many quart crock pot this is up somewhere in the corner. Um, but I found about a half a cup works great. This is something that's more of an art than a science, depending on what type of bone you're using. Um, cattle bone being bigger and thicker uh, will take longer than uh, rabbit bone in order to develop and bleach. So this isn't something that you can just like walk away and forget about it. You're going to want to come back and check on this every few minutes. Use a pair of tongs to get out a piece of bone and just decide whether or not it looks good to you. And always keep in mind that you want to rinse this right after you're done taking it out if you've decided you like it. And it will probably continue to develop for just a little bit after you're rinsing it. So just like when cooking bacon, taking it out just before it's done to your likeness is kind of what you want to do. Okay, let's fill this bad boy up to half a cup in a glass Pyrex container. Don't want to use any reactive metal. Make sure to use a wooden or plastic spoon or another piece of bone to stir this around real well. 
Now, if you listen closely to the crock pot, um, you might hear a bit of a hissing or sizzling, and that's going to be the peroxide at work. If you stop hearing any fizzing and stop hearing or stop seeing any bubbling going on, then the peroxide developer has completed its process and probably won't be whitening the bone any further. So if you were not happy with what you got as far as development of the bone and you've stopped hearing the chemical reaction, then I would go ahead and add a little bit more, but I haven't really generally found that that's been necessary. Okay, let's see how we're looking. Cumulatively, we've been at this um, for an hour. There we go. That is much better. Let's see if we can get some better lighting so it's not such a glare. See, now the bone is a nice, soft, almost uniform kind of ivory color rather than having so many dark pieces. The ends of the bone are always going to be a little bit darker, but I don't generally use the very ends anyway. And of course, this will continue to lighten as I wash it again, dry it, and let it sit in the sun for a bit. And so, pretty much the finished product here, this is an unwashed, uh, well, washed, but unprocessed bone. And then this is the bone that I just took out of the crock pot. And you can see the difference is pretty glaring, especially when you compare the two. And this will whiten a little bit more. Um, we're gonna have it in the light of the window. So yeah, in as little as an hour of time with just nothing more than a crock pot, some soap and some hair dye developer, we've got bone that's almost ready to start being carved into wonderful little trinkets and things. Um, if that's the sort of aesthetic that you're into, please visit our online store at tnhstore.square. Dot site. <laughs> we are looking into getting our actual own domain name here soon. Um, but I have listed on the website all of the little things that we create and any purchase that you make there, all of the profits go directly back into the restoring this homestead and into the care of the animals. So uh, and hopefully in a video coming up soon, I'll be able to document the actual journey that these pieces of bone go through from being just raw processed bone into all of the little things, little lovely things that we can create with it. Thanks for sticking around. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe if you'd like to follow along and hit the notification bell so you make sure you get notified when I upload a new video. Take care.